This tour for me was different than any other tour I had been on before. I've been touring myself for seven years, and I usually play the standard theater. And on this tour, I had my agent book me in, in different venues than I had ever played before. Uh, I played large 15,000-seat outdoor arenas, uh, smaller clubs, the Catskills, um, Atlantic City. And what I did was I took a documentary crew with me to document everything I was doing, on stage, off stage, and they virtually lived with me for a month and a half. And now I'm home, so here it is. I can't see you now, I'm gonna kill myself. 
So I don't want this on my head. So I bend down and stick my head underneath the histone. Publicity is one of the most important factors in a tour. And I do everything from magazine articles, newspaper articles, radio, television, everything I can do to go on to plug my dates. And that's just letting the public know where I'm going to be and when I'm going to be there. August 5th and 6th, you'll be at Valley Forge in Pennsylvania. Valley Forge. August 7th through 11th. And Jones Beach in New York. And we go all over. We'll be in Denver and the Sands. And we'll be all over the states. Right. And we end up September 13th at the amphitheater. But we'll be in, in uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. I'm all over. Oh. I don't even know. I'm going to. I did every show from one end of the continent to another. I wanted to reach every possible audience. What really surprised me was there was no audience more vast than that of the daytime soap opera. Oh, Good evening, Tess. You seem a little sad. Yeah, I am. The sky was getting now just took off left town. Barbara? I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. He's just in Oakdale for a day. Barbara Ryan, this is Howie Mandel. Hi. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. Gavin Bloody Kruger. And this is Tess. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I'm I'm on a, a national tour now. I'm going to be starting at uh, Jones Beach here in the, the uh, New York area, and then I'm traveling. I'll be at the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City, and then uh, at the Concord. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'm ending up September 13th at the Universal Amphitheater. It's not Paul. Oh. That's what you think, you know. We were just friends. Well, you know, that reminds me. I've got to talk to this girl, Kelly, and find out what... The one hard thing about doing this publicity is not only doing the job, but you want to make it entertaining, too, because that's what I am. I'm an entertainer. So what I decided to do when I did the Arsenio Hall show was, besides bringing on my documentary camera, I couldn't just sit there with the camera, I decided to bring on a Japanese man who would, be, who would act as my interpreter and say that I was also doing Japanese television at the same time, and he was going to interpret everything I did on the Arsenio Hall show, but add one word. And that word I chose was penis. And that was his only line. He just had to say the word penis. So I decided to get to the studio six hours before showtime and rehearse him. <laughs> Get it out. 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 20 million viewers, live television, the moment of truth. So I don't have them anymore, and that's a sad... How do you say that, huh? Uh. want from me? You want dancing girls? Fine! This is exciting. This has been a great year for me, an absolutely great year. I bought my first house this year. I did. And the, no, you don't. No. No, you don't have to applaud. You don't have to. Why are you clapping? It's not like a beat, you know? Oh, I know why you're clapping. Because you're happy and you know it. <laughs> so if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That's power. I like that. Okay, just the ladies now. If you're happy and you know it, come up and give me a blowjob. <laughs> How come there aren't any happy ladies? 
this tonight. <laughs> Pardon me? She's horny. She's horny. Then why isn't she sitting anywhere near you? <laughs> Sir? What, what is your name? Skip. Skip. <laughs> Such an American name, Skip. <laughs> I'm, uh, Skip. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you do, Skip? <laughs> you can't skip. What do you do? Tree service. Pardon me? Tree service. Tree service. <laughs> you just walk up to a tree and go, can I, can I do anything for you? <laughs> you, uh, if you need anything, uh, here to service you. I'll just, uh, I'll just be right over here. <laughs> Need anything? Just bark. <laughs> you really in the tree service business? Are you? What's that? The tree service business. Explain it to you, you idiot. You're in. What's that? Are you really in the tree service business? Yes. Okay, pop quick, pop quiz. How much wood can a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, skip. On this tour, I got to live out, I think, every comedian's fantasy. I felt like a rock star. I actually traveled with an entourage. I had two buses, I had the documentary crew, I had dancers. Lydia, Monique, the girls. I had Billy V. <laughs> he told a great story. Great story about Julio Iglesias. All right, Lydia. Comes. <clears throat> now, you got to picture six tractor trailers filled with equipment, staging, video cameras, multiple video projectors that are mounted 25 feet high. That's a very big production. This is not a small I also had my own musical director, Dean Rod. I traveled with my opening act, comedian Howard Buskang. There was also Louis Navoa, who always ate dinner with us. I don't know what he did. And Ethan Weber, my technical advisor. There's 800 pounds of dry ice involved with this. Do you know what 800 pounds of dry ice cost? It's a dollar a pound. Do you have any idea how much it weighs? We set it up out in the loading dock, and that's how the show ran with a one follow spot in a double pink in half intensity and nine spotlights stood there with none. Bullshit. I swear to God, true story happened. I never understood one story Billy V told me. But he was a great guy. I mean, he saved my life. I, I played on this tour, I played the cast skills. I'd never played there before. And being a comedian, this is like the Mecca. This is where the greats started. You know, Martin and Lewis met there and all the great comedians. So when I was playing that room when I was at the Concord. I mean, I felt like, God, I'm this kid and I hope I can handle it. And, and Billy V was the stage manager. We met him and took him with us. He was a stage manager at the Concord. And I walked in and he saw I was nervous and he took me like, like a mentor, like, like a father figure under his wing and kind of taught me how to play the room. I was really nervous. I'll never forget that. I was, I've never been that nervous. Fuck. First of all, fuck is out. Can't say fuck. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm not serious. No. Uh, it's, it's a great room. It's got a lot of uh, versatility uh, in the sense that we can bring large objects on stage like uh, animals and cars. Excuse me, you want to hold a sec? Backstage, fine talking. Hey, how you doing? What can you, when you say you can bring large objects on stage, uh, you mean like a, I don't know. I don't have they ever had a... Had like a Sandy, hold on a second. He she wants to use the quad. I would check with Michael first. Can you send me less signal on your keyboard? Thank you, please. Less signal. Yes, Sandy. Anyways, what, what should I know about this audience? Keep moving. Keep moving. If you're moving your act, it's great. I've never seen your act, so it's hard for me to anticipate what you're going to do here tonight. But if you keep moving, Howie, I think uh, you got 50 percent in the bag. See, Ben Vereen comes. Right. Music plays. Ben's in the wings. Clap! 
cartwheels, cartwheels right onto the stage, and he never stops. Keeps moving, puts a light from the ceiling straight down, and he dances with that light. The light goes out, he looks around, he moves, he keeps moving. They go, look at this guy move, and he sweats all up. They love it. That's the key. Action, movement, cartwheels. Out, 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 land center stage, boom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dance, dance, dance. He keeps moving. He doesn't stop moving. This is Ben, ben Green. He's got this room figured out. So just what you're saying is dance, 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 and, and Keep out. Keep moving and out. Out. Leave him wanting more. That's the key. That night, I took his advice. You guys like gambling games? Okay, here's a quick gambling game. Here's the one rule, okay? Okay, douches are wild. <laughs> some, people, some people think that's disgusting, but, but you, you, you gotta love me for one thing, okay? I, I have to buy that. <laughs> I actually went in the store and buy, twice, twice. Does anybody here work for an airlines? Airlines, because I told you before, I take that stuff carry on. I took this carry on. I took this. Why would they take this away from me? What kind of weapon could this possibly be? What, what could I do with this? Could I take this up to the cockpit and maybe? Ooh, that's what it's for. <laughs> Take me to Lebanon. <laughs> it's the Massengale Massacre of Flight 726. <laughs> it happened one summer's eve. <laughs> oh, God. Women, women. <laughs> I got the only household in America now. My daughter picks this up, and my wife says, put that down, that's daddy's. <laughs> we go through weird stuff. I guess we go through weird stuff, too. I don't know if you can tell. I'm, uh, I have a sore throat. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> no, I have a sore throat. I went to the doctor recently for, with, with a sore throat. And uh, he said, let me give you a complete physical. And I've never had this checked before. Tell me if you guys have, because maybe. He said, he said I'm going to have to check it. Well, you're here for full physical. Let me check your prostate. I said, fine. Ah. What, are you, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? That's so, how did you know where it was? I didn't know where it was. I never had it checked. It's in my ass. What are you laughing at? Where's yours? You don't understand. I'm at this doctor. I'm bent over a table. He's got his fist up my ass. I'm thinking, I'm here for a sore throat. How far up are you going? And then he pulls his fist out of my ass and says, you're okay. <laughs> this is how he tells. Now somebody comes up to me in the street and says, Howie, how are you? Goes, Hang on. I'm okay. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> God. Ladies, you go through twice as much. I have more respect for women than I do for men. You, have, you go through twice as much of humility in life than men do. You do. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that to get applause, I'm saying that because I believe it. And I didn't know that until two years ago. Two years ago, I went to the gynecologist for the first time in my life. And I... <laughs> not for me. <laughs> They're looking at me like, does he have a yeast infection? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Is that dangerous? <laughs> like, 
What happens if you let a yeast infection go? Do loaves start coming out? <laughs> oh my God, something's gone awry. <laughs> what is it? How the fuck do you ladies get a yeast infection? What is that? Is that from sitting on filthy muffins with no underwear on? Fucking the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I knew you were coming, so I baked a bunch. <laughs> I, I hope that doesn't offend ladies. I have, I actually, I, I don't mean to offend ladies, but you are. That's not true. Pardon me? That's not true? What is not true? Yeast infections. Yeast infections is not true. The whole yeast infection theory is a lie. You. Pardon me, go ahead. When you have a bladder infection. Oh. When I have a bladder infection. Yeast infection. Obviously you have a yeast infection and you're offended, right? <laughs> but this is on Showtime. People are going to be recognizing you all over America as the woman with the yeast infection. You walk around for the rest of your life going, aren't you? All I can say is thank God for good friends. I'll never forget, right in the middle of the tour, one night after a show, I went to my hotel room and I sat up the whole night watching a, a Webster marathon. And, and you know how it is when something starts to irk you inside? That, that whole Emmanuel Lewis deal just started I don't know how to explain it, eating, eating away at me. And, uh, you know, I'm on the road, I'm away from my family, I don't know where to turn, so thank God uh, Mr. T was in town. Do you know Emmanuel Lewis? Emmanuel Lewis, we did a show that, no, no, we didn't, no. Yeah, he, we hung out a little bit one time, you know. Now I told him, I said, look here, Emmanuel, if you want to hang with me, you stop having these people pick your ass up, you know, you ain't no kid no more. Hit a man 25 years old, people picking him up. He was on a special one time, here Jesse Jackson held him, passed him down the line. I said, man, then I'll look, all the girls will hook. I said, look here, man, don't have no girl pick you up unless she's gonna give you some pussy, you know. He said, too many men, man, you a grown man. You know, you pick, moving him around like a, like a teddy bear. I said, hey, they say I'm a brawl, pick you up, tell her give you song. You know, I always say. Definitely, you know, picking him up, you know. That's, that's really something, because you can really pick him up, you know, because he's tiny. So I won't be his friend. Dig it. I won't be his friend. I'm you won't be caring. his friend? I won't. I'm not caring. I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, because that's why it's dead weight. It is. Yeah. You can't, why be his friend if you're going to carry this? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to carry a guy. You know what I mean? There's enough you gotta feed the guy, but he had to carry him too. Yeah. Man. Man. So what you been doing now, you know? I've been traveling around a lot lately. I've been doing some shows for the troops. No, um, not the armed forces, the Girl Scouts, because they're out there every day. <laughs> Actually, I've been doing some, are, are there any people here in the armed forces? <laughs> and what do you do in the armed forces? Communications. <laughs> Pardon me? James. James. Everybody knows you except me. <laughs> and, and what do you do? What, what are you in? Communication. You're in communication. <laughs> I am so fucking brilliant. It's been... No, what, what, what force are you in? What do you do? The army. So you, you can be all that you want to be. <laughs> what, what do you do in the army? Satellite. You work on a microwave satellite. Is that for people that want to make cheese sandwiches really fast in space? <laughs> right there? What, 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 what is your name? My name is Your name is Cindy? And, and what, what are you in? I'm in the Army. I'm in the Army. <laughs> what, what do you do in the Army, Cindy? I'm a captain and I'm in charge of um, important stuff. I'm a captain and I'm in charge of important stuff. <laughs> Captain Cindy in charge of important stuff reporting, sir. Cindy, we have more important stuff for you to be in charge of. 
you just give me all the important stuff because I'm Captain Cindy. <laughs> what kind of important stuff are you in charge of, Cindy? If you tell me, you'll have to kill me. <laughs> well, if you tell everyone here, some of us can escape. <laughs> can you tell us anything that you've been in charge? Were you, were, were you over in the Middle East? Yeah. No. So it couldn't have been really important. <laughs> no, what are you, are you, are you on a mission right now? Are you working right now? Yeah, I'm undercover. You're undercover. <laughs> So those really aren't your tits? <laughs> we were playing, well, I was playing on an army base recently, uh, and they give you gifts, you know, they're really happy that you show up there and you're there for them, and, and they give me gifts, they give me this, they give me this, uh, this camouflage bag. Can you see it? <laughs> what the fuck is this deal? What is this camouflage? The military, the American military, which comes up with the highest in technology, they come up with heat-seeking missiles and radar and the Patriot and all that. They came up with camouflage, green on green. It's supposed to look exactly like the forest. Look at this. Does this look like a forest? I want to go behind here and pee. <laughs> And guys wear this in the battle. You see uniforms like that and a helmet with two twigs on. Nobody can see me. <laughs> I look like the forest. <laughs> I would think if they wanted the uniform to look like the forest, it should be one tree with a squirrel here. <laughs> but you know what really fucked me up? I was on a base and I saw a plane painted like this. <laughs> So if this plane is flying over enemy territory, what happens? The enemy says, no, don't shoot that down. That's not a plane. That's a flying forest. <laughs> you could kill a squirrel. <laughs> I actually did kill a squirrel today by accident. We were driving out here, and, uh, and, and uh, a squirrel darted in front of the car at, like, uh, just darted right in front of the car and we slammed on the brakes and, and pulled over to the side and I got out and shot it. We couldn't... <laughs> couldn't stop it. You went yay when I said I killed a squirrel? That's correct. Why, do you... Do you have a run-in with a squirrel? <laughs> you were what? I was bullied by a squirrel in high school. You were bullied by a squirrel in high school. <laughs> were you fucking with his nuts? I think we were in the middle of the tour and uh, it was our first night off. Everybody had been working really hard and I, I was so appreciative. I wanted to pamper them. I wanted to do something special for the crew. So I canceled everybody's hotel reservations and took them to a place that my dad had taken the family every summer. I loved it there and, and I think everybody else did. We camped, we lit a fire, we ate marshmallows, we sang songs, we told some of the, the scariest stories I had ever heard. Every night about this time, it was a rabbit, a fuzzy wuzzy rabbit. He's usually come out this time of night looking for marshmallows. Había un hombre grande. Salía todas las noches. He had eyes like an owl. And every night he would come out looking for marshmallows around the campfire. At this point, I noticed that the dancers, you know girls, they get so competitive and they started playing those girlish competitive games that girls will play. And before we knew it, it was back to work, critiquing the Rhode Island show from the night before. My wife picked each and every one of Does that mean tomorrow morning I wake up with mothballs?
me. The bug's back. Security. Ma'am, it's on you. It's on your knee. No, don't, don't, don't. Don't move. Nobody move. Nobody move. The woman has a dangerous bug on her knee. Please, security, do something. What do we do? It's moving up. No, don't. No, okay. What, what should we do? Maybe stroke it. No, don't move. Don't look. Look the other way. Keep your hands in the air. It's going right. It's going right up. Should we let it in? <laughs> I lifted her her pant leg and it crawled up. <laughs> so, sir, that's a surprise for you a little later on. <laughs> and insects start dropping out. <laughs> what's your name? What, what's your name? Uh, I don't know. Alvin Bernard Spears Jr. <laughs> <laughs> he said Alvin Bernard Spears Jr. <laughs> what kind of fucking name is that? <laughs> you look like a man who's hiding a gerbil. <laughs> What, what, what do you do, Alvin Bernard Spears Jr.? <laughs> Is the who <laughs> part of it? I'm a household engineer. Pardon me? Household engineer. A household engineer. What does that mean? You drive a train around your living room? <laughs> choo choo, there goes Alvin Bernard Spears Jr. <laughs> What I love best about doing stand-up comedy is being in control. And I think on this tour, I only lost control once. And that was one night in Atlantic City. Uh, there was a, a pretty girl sitting right up front center wearing a short skirt with her leg up, and she wasn't wearing any underwear. Why are you holding your leg up in the air? She's sitting like this. Like this. <laughs> You're smiling and not with your mouth. And that's good. I <laughs> I was so affected by what had happened that night that from then on, whenever Howard Busgang, my opening act, would be out on stage performing, we would be backstage actually praying for a great show. We have a show. Some of them you want to make a play in front of the mirror. We're going to do it. Yeah. We're going to do the show. And um, God is with us. Well, the one that says objects and mirror are larger than they appear. So I figured... Let's... Keep our energy up. My wife thinks Terry would be excited. The other night I came home, she was lying on the bed with rope all tied up. I started taking my clothes off. She said, what are you doing, you idiot? Women, women, do you, do you think guys are fucking idiots? Do you think we're idiots? the truth. I've been, let, let me tell you this, because my wife gets mad at me. I've been married for 12 years now, so I know this woman better than I know anybody in, in the world, right? So I can tell she's mad, but I think all women do this. I'll walk into the house, and she pissed at me, and I know that, and I'll say, what's wrong? And she'll say, nothing! I say, wait a minute, I know something's wrong. There's nothing wrong. Why do you ask? Then what bothers me is not that she won't tell me, that she thinks I'm that much of a fucking idiot that I won't be able to tell. Another room, and I'll come out an hour later, and I'll be doing this. Right? She'll say, "Howie, what are you doing?" And I'll say, "Nothing." <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> you know what makes me laugh? I I actually wrote that joke. I worked on it at home. <laughs> but I'll never forget this. I was working on this routine, and, and I, was, <laughs> I was working on the living room, and my wife and my daughter were sitting there, and my daughter turns to my wife and says, Mommy, what's Daddy doing? And she says, Shh, he's working. <laughs> this 
is my job. <laughs> I thought my daughter was going to grow up and start dating. Guys are going to come to the house to pick her up. <laughs> I'm going to be working late. <laughs> what are your intentions, young man? You just wait in there. I have work to do. <laughs> I'm going to do shit like that. I'm going to answer the door in like lace panties and a pipe. shit like that. Like originally, I'm from Toronto, Canada. One of the great opportunities in this business is going home and performing in front of your friends and family. People say going home gives them kind of a warm feeling inside that they can't describe. I'll tell you something, this time, the moment I crossed the border, my feelings went uh, a lot deeper than that. You go, you go first. <laughs> One of the great pleasures for me in being back in Canada was the opportunity to see my younger brother, Steve. As children, we really didn't communicate much, so this was going to be our chance. Plus the fact, I guess it was about seven and a half months since we had seen each other. It's been about seven and a half months since we've seen each other. It's nice to see you. After all was said, uh, we ended up going outside and, and frolicking like we did when we were kids. I think I've always been a kid at heart. I mean, even on this tour, during the days, when I had the days free, I would look for something kid-like to do. I'll never forget the day I tried to get on the SR2. Is it scary? Can we go on in it with their cameras and stuff? I don't know about that. I'll, I'll have to ask my manager. Pardon me? Ask the manager. You can ask the manager? Yeah. Wow. How do Mandel wants to know if you, you can go inside the SR2 with the camera? Yeah. Yeah? Huh? No. No. You know, no, this, that's, that's bullshit, okay? No, because I've come here on many an occasion and I've walked into that SR2, right. no problem whatsoever. Let me talk. What's her name? Mary. Mary? Hello, Mary? Yeah, this is uh, my man. He said, no, I can't allow this taping inside. There is Bob. Hello, Bob. Hi, uh, we just got the approval that they can uh, go ahead on that. Thank God my manager was here, huh? Okay, that's great. Could somebody sign a, uh, a release for us down here? Mike, Mike, and what do you do? Yeah, I'm a banker. You're a banker. 
A sperm banker? <laughs> Can you, do they actually, sperm banks, do they look like banks? I've never been to one. Has anybody ever been to a sperm bank? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and you're probably the teller. I'd like to make a deposit. <laughs> you know what I always imagine with sperm banks? That, that you know, when you go to regular banks, now they have the automated teller. <laughs> and you put your card in the machine, and it always fucks up and eats your card, and you don't get any cash. Do you think, like, in the future, like, sperm banks are going to have those automated tellers? <laughs> You're going to be out with a girl on a Friday night. You say, honey, I just want to stop here and make a deposit. <laughs> You go up the automated teller, you punch in your card number, you put your dick in the machine. It says there's not enough in your account. But here's the thing, it fucks up like a normal automated teller and it eats your dick. So you gotta go the whole weekend with no dick. You gotta go to the bank early Monday morning to claim your dick. You're in line with five other guys who lost their dick Friday night. Bank manager's got a pile of dicks on his desk. <laughs> You want to claim yours, you have to show ID of a card with like a headshot. <laughs> show running time is usually two hours. Dom DeLuise came to two hours. I mean, he did two hours? But he rolled drums out on stage. So give me a drum roll. He rolled out a drum. <laughs> and and he, did he do well? He killed him. He did well. Standing ovations, multiple standing ovations, five times. Well, he did two hours. You just said do short. But he had props. Oh, so the key is having props. Capes, swords. Oh, if you have capes and swords. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Pardon me? He had capes yeah, and swords yeah, he came out with. Just give me a drum roll. We rolled him out a drum. It was as big as a Volkswagen. Yeah, Stuff, uh, stick. You know, props. I don't know if you have any of that in your show. No props? Props are good. I never saw your act. I don't no, know what you props do. Props are good? Props are great. I love props. Props are great. Do you have anything? We can come up with stuff. A rubber shark. 80 bucks. <laughs> we laughing at The guy told me that this is a scaled-down model of the full-size rubber shark. It makes the authentic rubber shark noise. I had this at the beach, and I went, and 600 people came screaming out of the water, rubber shark, rubber shark! <laughs> What if there were sharks this size and shark attacks from sharks this size? Can you imagine that? And it just bites the tip off. You know what the movie would be called? Jews. Billy V was right again. I don't know what would, I don't know what either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I know one. I know. I just remembered one. Here. Okay. Follow, follow, follow. 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 Give me a kiss over here. What? Give me a kiss. Come on, you can do it. It's show business. I don't want kiss. It's show business. Don't do it. What? If people... When people are in a taxi business, they, right. the guy gives them a job. Go up there and pick up someone. Take them to the airport. Right. Thanks. Right. In show business, the guy says, "Look, you'll work with so and so. You'll open for him. Oh, beautiful baby." And they. <laughs> you can do it, it's all right. So we're in show business now? You want to kiss? Really? Well, this is better really? No, over here. Over here. <laughs> I don't want to kiss you. You can do it. Maybe after the show. All right. You know, if I'm feeling a little frisky or something. After the show was one of my favorite times because that's when I had an opportunity to meet my fans. Oh, Oh, I've never been to a concert, never been to anything, but to meet you was a, and I made you a, I made you a shirt. Oh, wow. And I love Bobby's world, too. Oh, thank you. Really, my husband passed away a couple years ago, and this is really just, I don't know, you know, it's really great. I have never been no place since then, and, and it's the first time, and this is great. Oh, wow. It really is. Oh, thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you. That's real cool. Why did Saddam Hussein oh, yeah, kill his wife? For that. Why? Because he caught her drinking bush beer and eating quail. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love it? I love I it. I like that one better. No, right there. Right here. Are you serious? Yes, I had a heart attack. Yeah. Dale. That was his birthday. What? <laughs> well, I can't get it. I gotta get it right on the tape. Oh, well.
It's especially flattering to have your peers come backstage, like Bob Costin. I gotta go and, with, uh, Red Button. Red Button. And Judd Nelson. I'll never forget the night that the amazing Kreskin showed up backstage to give me that proverbial <laughs> pat on the back. <laughs> Great to meet you. Oh my God, that's one of my favorite places <laughs> in the world. I love that area. It's tremendous. That's my high. That's all right. <laughs> Good Lord, you know, it feels different when they finish, but they don't tell you. Ah. But I'll see you. All right, folks. All right, thanks a lot. I got Michael Bolton. Wow. Hi. I'm a big fan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I just want to thank you for the uh, tickets. They're great seats. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, I have to tell you that your show was, uh, it was really neat. Thank you. Thanks. Neat show. Thanks again. I gotta go. I got my kids with me. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. Everybody, come here for a minute. <laughs> that would be me. Okay.
to a, a, a close, um, especially the dancers, they, they would open up. People would open up. We, we became like a family. I don't think any of us here had a lesbian relationship. No. <laughs> Until my sister had an accident, and she, she was run over, and it broke her ankle, and that finished our career for quite some time. Yeah. Well, we were told that I would never walk again. So I wasn't able to do any more dancing until I got older. And after I retired, then we joined the Follies after 60. And now we're back to where we were before and enjoying it very much. I'm enjoying it also, and I'm glad her ankle is better so that we were able to join the Follies and become dancers again. I got real sad at the end of the tour. You know, you grow attached to people, and it was tough saying goodbye. It was tough uh, just thinking that now I'm going to be home and I'm not living with these people anymore. You guys going to be sad when this tour's over? Yes, we are. Oh, it's going to yes. kill me. I'm, I'm going to hate it. I'm really sad. I'm really going to hate it. I'm starting to feel really sad now. Oh, are, you, are you sad? Uh, I'm a little uh, sad. Too yeah. bad. Yeah. Too mm -hmm. bad. I love you all. Oh, we love you, you too, Howie. Okay, nice. good night, girls. Good night, Howie. Good night. Let's do a prayer. No, yeah. no. No, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Good night, everybody. Good night. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. When a young computer programmer tries to gain access to his stolen files, he's confronted by the...